Over the last couple years, I think I've had more requests to record this vibe than pretty much any of the other ones, and today, thanks to your input, we're making her happen. So thank you for continuing to help drive this channel. Welcome everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV down at Forest River today taking a look at some Vibe models. They were kind enough to pull a bunch of them up for me. You folks said a couple of them that I recorded, you kind of want to learn more about the brand, so I'm getting us some more coverage here. This 28R rail is uh, something of, I'm going to call it a little bit of a portable flat deck fifth wheel. And what I mean by that is you've got that opposing living room super slide where you've got all the windows over on the campsite, island kitchen, kitchen and entertainment slide, you know, it gives you that big open living space. Now, all the windows, the light colors, the carpetless, ventless floor, and the taller ceiling make the living area of this thing feel absolutely huge. Up front, you do have a private bedroom and bathroom. It's not a full bed slide. They have other models for things like that, like maybe that new 34XL might be a little more your speed. The goal here is to give you something with maximum living space um, while still trying to manage the total length. That being said, the RV is about 34 and a half foot long tip to tail. And almost on that fact alone, I really don't recommend half tons pair up with this. I do think with the size of this thing, you want to pretty much be three quarter ton and up. If you're gonna be flat land, uh, very modest terrain towing, and you got a really heavy half ton, uh, okay, maybe, but my, not my general recommendation. Uh, again, the color palette, light and bright. They, the cabinet doors are interesting. They're soft clothes, and they're a one-piece routed door, so there's no seams in the cabinet doors that can fail, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, the bedroom has an extra bonus closet, which is great because they go with an asymmetrical bedroom arrangement, but what really captivates me on this RV are things like the, uh, the front pass-through compartment with all the pegboard for organizing all your outside stuff. But the dining, instead of their flimsy booth that they had the last couple of years that I was never very impressed with, Vibe went with this freestanding table and chairs that can spin and rotate. So if you want to move it into a desk mode, which is mostly what we're going to see today, it provides some new and cool different functions when you don't necessarily have to feed friends and family. And... What? Instead of doing this one... I can't... Instead of... Yeah. Beautiful way to start this, Josh. Well, well done. Instead of starting from the front to the back of the living area, I thought I'd just kind of start from the rear sofa here and look around. Because one of the things this RV does exceptionally well is give off maximized campsite window coverage. And you might notice how all the windows are opening for airflow now. That's not something Vibe always did in the past. Um, in previous years, your slide side windows were opening for airflow but the, uh, the big viewing windows were not. Now, they did some awesome marketing, called it panoramic viewing windows, which made you think like it was a positive feature. But the fact is, they didn't open for airflow. And I think if you ask most people, with very few exceptions, uh, maximum airflow, every window opening whenever possible is something a lot of people would generally prefer and desire whenever they can get it. Now, over here... I love what manufacturers do this, although it seems like fewer and fewer of them are offering the choice between a population controlling armrest, which by the way, it does have a single type A USB plug in there, so slow charger, but it does have something that could keep a device kind of topped off. Or you could open that up and have a little bit more of a love seat kind of situation, or like if you wanna sling your legs across your partner's lap right there and talk them into giving you like a little foot rub or something, I, I don't know, I don't know your life, just whatever might work. Um, the, uh, the, there's no different decor swaptions, by the way. This is just how they look right here. Um, and uh, I, I will tell you this. The camera that I use is not friendly to things in various brown tone families. So this has a little bit of a, not quite a full-on terracotta clay color, but it's it's definitely in that brown tone zone. Um, against the uh, the gray tones that are in here, overall, I think it looks nice. It almost gives it like, Kind of a classic warm borderline sort of western motif but it could also be modernized very very quickly i think our kitchen counters are all solid surface and you're not going to find carpet well interestingly generally you don't really find carpet in this what i mean by that is under the sofa it looks very intentional they do a small strip of carpet back there and it's not enough to like keep your toes warm i don't 
actually understand its purpose. I don't know why it's there. I just know that it is. I like that it's household and USB outlets on both sides of the sofa, by the way, but man, they're all the way down at the floor. You're going to need some cord extensions to make them actually useful. And boy, they put the biggest window on the back of that sucker they can. It actually does dip down below the, uh, the sofa line a little bit. And in classic rear living rooms, when I got into this industry, that's what you would find. That maximized, gigantic window on the back wall of an RV. So that's kind of taken me back uh, a little bit. Overall, the lighting package in here is, is very, very good. Although with the big windows and all the sunshine pouring in through them, we're not going to see a dramatic effect on camera. Especially the way my camera tries to light balance everything out. So it really minimizes the impact we're looking at there. Something else I noticed, and maybe it's just because I've got the table twisted in desk mode right now this is so wide open and easy to walk through now if you had a couple chairs off the ends like you know where you'd actually use my laptop i've been using this camper as my my little base of operations all day by the way that's why a bunch of my stuff like my jacket my backpack i've got a couple of my drinks and things sitting in the sink by the way so it's not factory garbage it's the stuff that i bring with me and then i bring my own little garbage bag and i take care of it all when i'm done uh so that's just kind of what we're looking at here 50 inch jumbotron staring straight across from us right here and we're going to see in a minute that that tv can pivot around for some easy viewing now we got a tootsie toaster down there which is cool it looks like maybe some dead wasted pocket space on either side of that i'm never a big fan of wasted space even if it was just open face with like a little shelf halfway through something i don't like waste um Kitchen is a little bit of a toe stubber by the way that's something that you can pretty clearly see right there i'd be kind of curious in a product like this, like this is not a full-on luxury, you know, I, I could see somebody full-timing in it. it. People ask, is it full-time capable? That depends on you. There's not a single specific thing that designates an RV as full-time capable, really, or not. Um, I've seen people full-time RV in very small rigs, so it really does depend on you. And what do you think of how they did the kitchen over here? It doesn't have a window, but that also means that now I don't have a window where baking grease can splatter on it and clean or need cleaning. Um, do they have, out oh good, there's a set of household outlets back there because I'm like, man, this is begging to be like a little griddle station and appliance corner. If they didn't put outlets in there, that's gonna be a missed opportunity, especially considering the, um, the forward wall up there, you know, where you start to move over into the hallway. There's some good storage there, but it is somewhat shallow. Like if, when I get up here a little bit more close uh, for you, I don't know that I'm going to call that like a coffee bar. Um, maybe some mini travel size coffee makers will fit up there, but mm, it's a werewolves London. I didn't mean to do that, but uh, ooh. <laughs> there's a pop culture reference I hadn't intended to work into something, which reminds me of my favorite knock knock joke um, in the current moment. Anyway, um, say knock knock. Who's there? You say, ah, they say, ah, who? And you say, werewolves in London. <laughs> it's so stupid. And perhaps that's where I take the pleasure in it. Now, this is nice that it's a no knee knocker dinette. And um, it does include a pair of fold away guest chairs. I've actually got them strapped onto the bed for like transit mode, but just to help demonstrate that, uh, you'll get to see those later in the video. For now though, I'm gonna take you slightly into the realm of wide angle mode so I can really stage this up where you're uh, showcasing the Roman shades through the RV and how they really black things out. And the fact that you can twist and shout that table very quickly and easily, by the way, like you see me do it right there in real time. You don't have to jerk it, yank it. It just brackets in place. There's no like knobs that you need to mess with or latches you need to pull. It's just simple and easy. And again, I've been using this as my base of operations RV all day. I've been literally using it as a desk all day. It gets the job done. Obviously, you got to hide a bed on the rear wall there. Is it the most comfortable thing? No. Do you want people staying with you all the time? I assume not, otherwise I think you probably would have got a bunkhouse, am I right? You know, I don't know, it makes sense to me. But overall, the kitchen is interesting because like you have big drawer space, you have that nice big pantry. I think you have adequate kind of countertop prep space right there, you know. Uh, below the sink feels a little bit tight because you do have a pair of small doors for what otherwise feels like a pretty big space under there. You do have to kind of reach around to get into it. 
but I think it's adequate. I think the kitchen gets the job done. I think the big focus on this RV is a large, expansive living room. Like I said, the light colors, all the windows, no carpet, except for the weird spot under the uh, sofa. The skylight in the uh, up top here, I, I, it really lightens, brightens, opens everything up to make it look and feel big. And again, I, I, I think it's a two-fold factor because that area over there, that walkway feels huge. I think... The island is actually shifted and cheated over a little bit towards the kitchen. And I, people will ask sometimes, like, why is the island in the middle of the walkway? Because if you move the island a little bit closer, it starts to feel very tight in the kitchen space very, very quickly. Like, if you want to drop that oven door or whatever, you got it, it's not exactly the most convenient thing, you know? But this one prioritized living and uh, space and comfort over anything else, I do suppose. You know, I'm wondering, depending on how many chairs you need to bust out, that might not be a bad space, like, on one side or the other for, like, I don't know, dog kennel cages, something, possibly, perhaps, maybe not, I don't know, moving on. Um, single air conditioner standard on this, 15,000 BTU, single standard air, but you do have the option of going with 50 amp and the option of of either aftermarket or right from the factory, adding a second air conditioner, by the way. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Moving uh, back a couple steps here into the bathroom. Um, it is just a mirror on the wall, but thankfully they do have uh, a little bit of, well, not a little bit, that's a pretty decent like lipid storage storage. And you can see how these are soft clothes, but also it's a one piece door they don't have seams on the door that can split and fall apart. However, what I think this actually is, it feels like maybe a painted press board, particle board, something like that, which doesn't necessarily scare me. I just want you to know what you're getting into here. Although it looks like somebody scarred that right there and did their best to kind of patch that up. That should be replaced if it's coming from the factory. That's how I feel. That's my two cents anyway. Um, decent counter space for no more room than we have uh, available here. And I guess that could possibly be like... Um, extra storage for linens, towels, uh, toiletries, and or um, backup butt napkins, you know what I mean? Um, speaking of which, space around the toilet's pretty darn effective. And I like how they maintain the um, no floor ducted heating in here by running that duct through the cabinet wall. Some floor plans don't allow for that. This one does. I will say, though, something that left me a little confused, and you're actually going to see it on my face, because this RV is six foot nine from floor to ceiling, I expected to be able to stand in that shower without my head touching the ceiling. And I could not. I'm a little over six foot myself with my shoes on and my, my peach fuzz on top of my head, probably six two floor to ceiling. I was very surprised I didn't fully fit inside that shower. And I think it's because maybe for plumbing reasons, I don't know why they built that shower up fairly high. Now, this is one of those, like, pivot doors. There's certain times, I think the pivot door looks and feels fancy, but it does leave the bedroom entryway a little narrow. I don't know that I, I, I love that. That's my personal two cents, though. It's neat, but I prefer function over fashion myself. Now, normally these chairs wouldn't be here, but just to show you where those chairs can go while you are traveling, it actually, you know, is intended to be able to strap down to the bed in transit. And you might notice how there's a lot of room at the foot of the bed right here. It's because it's a short queen, which baffles me. If there's room for a true queen, I, I would really just ask a manufacturer just do a true queen. And let me ask you folks at home, is there any, like, if an RV already had a true queen and you wanted a camp queen, would that be a deal breaker? I suspect the answer is no, that's not going to be a problem. If an RV has a camp queen and you want a true queen, is that a deal breaker? And then also keep in mind, factory mattresses typically are awful. So they may literally be expecting you to replace it with a true queen bed of your choice. I just wish they would have sized it that way straight from the factory. That's just my nerdy, personal little wish right there. Household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed are uh, very nice. Um, where do we want to start? Let's start up top looking at our, our, our bedroom storage right here. They don't have any kind of struts. Thankfully, they are soft closed doors. 
Um, but again, gravity is going to do that work for you uh, effectively. Under the bed, they have a really nice un uh, setup. And it might look a little bit familiar. It looks a little bit like a Salem and a Wildwood if you're paying attention. That's not by accident. Vibe, um, a lot of people don't realize, is an extended member of the Salem Wildwood family. Uh, if you went to the family reunion, I call it the cousin that you don't see that often. They're in the family. When you look at the photo book, you can see the resemblance, like their nose and their cheekbones. Yeah, they kind of got that look, but they're not the direct brother, sister, uh, family member. They're, you know, an uncle's uh, child or something like that. They're a cousin is the best way I can describe this. Now, I am also about to predict um, in road mode, you're going to lose everything in the kitchen. Uh, yep, that happened very quickly. Thing is, though, this RV has stable steps, and sometimes you'll hear me say, well, if you can fold the stable steps down, you can open the super slide, which is true. Stable steps stick out farther than a slide out, especially when they're coming down because of the way that an arcing radius works. Um, thing is, but also, it doesn't matter that you can open that slide because this RV was really not built with travel use as a priority. Even if you do open that living slide, only thing you're going to get to over here is the freezer because the island blocks the fridge. And someone would say, well, why don't they shift the island down? Well, then people would say it blocks the entertainment or something like that. It just is what it is. And I want to take the time to show it on camera so you can decide if it's the right one for your money or not. As discussed previously, you know, with the, the weight and the general size and stature of this thing, I don't feel comfortable offering a generalized recommendation of half-ton towability on this. Um, maybe it, under specific circumstances with a very capable half-ton, potentially, but not just as a generalized across the board. With, with this thing, I think you want to be three-quarter ton and up. Now, you might notice the dual air conditioners here. We kind of talked about that inside. But uh, again, these are uh, available with 50 amp service and factory second air, if you are so inclined. And overall, the general look of these, I think, is about the best vibes looked in a number of years. Up front, we got our power tongue jack, dual 20 pound propane tanks, and battery disconnects so that, you know, when the RV's in storage, the solar package up top, uh, 200 watt solar package is basically a good battery tender. Now, one thing the solar battery or solar controller, the monitor, is over there in that little uh hump that sticks out that's where your docking center is located um i kind of think i generally prefer it when my solar charge controller is inside where i can just keep an easier eye on it and it is basically a battery tending solar package it's not the kind of solar package that can scale up and run air conditioners and all that kind of stuff it's it's none of that actually solar doesn't run anything solar only charges your batteries in case you're curious i do really appreciate that they split the power awning it's a push-pull benefit so i like the fact that most of my awning isn't eaten up by a giant super slide by trying to put one big awning over it however by splitting the awning if it is rainy and uh, you're trying to go in and out that door where that awning is, is located, if the, even if the awning's out, some rainwater is going to kind of dribble off that and spritz you in the face. And I, I hope you appreciate the, the candor and the transparency, you know? That's the kind of thing that a lot of people don't talk about, but it's a very real thing when you have an entry door right next to an awning on a rainy day. This is also, I think, the only model in the entirety of the Vibe family that has no sort of outside camp kitchen, because... It just ain't a spot for one, really. <laughs> All the windows open in for airflow, nicely tinted. And the chassis is a little bit different from the vast majority of the industry. Um, well over, I don't know the exact number, but I think like well over 90% of the chassis used in the RV industry um, come from Lippert. And this is not one of them. This is made by Norco. It's a uh, huck bolted uh, Z-frame kind of chassis, not an I-beam. Um, it also, you can see, does have an enclosed underbelly. It is forced air heated, and they do have holding tank heaters. So what that means is not magic Four Seasons capability. I, I despise that Four Seasons phrase myself because it's it's a lie. But um, it's a good extended season camper. So what, what does that mean? What kind of temperature can you use it? I don't know. Manufacturer doesn't do the testing, so I can't tell you. What I can tell you is this. If it's getting pretty cold... And if it's gonna dip uh, below freezing tonight and come back 40s, 50s tomorrow, you're probably gonna be okay.
but I can only throw a probably in there. I can't really guarantee anything. And neither can any salesperson at any dealership because the manufacturer, Vibe, Forest River, hasn't offered a promise. How possibly can anybody else offer you a promise then? These are cable slides, by the way, on both the kitchen and the living room. Uh, it is a wide stance stability axle system, which really does help offset some of the length of the RV. Not in terms of, it doesn't make the RV magically shorter. It just makes it easier to handle when you're going down the road. Couple last things here. Um, it's a single sewer outlet, which is very, very handy. So you don't, you know, you basically hook it up one and done. And uh, the, uh, the hookups are not like buried underneath a slide out or anything. And it does also have, a uh, tankless on-demand water heater right there and it's a 60,000 BTU variety so if you're using some hot water doing some dishwashing while somebody else is in the shower both of you should generally be able to enjoy some hot water service speaking of hot water service that really reminds me of the time my California friend was telling me how they had a two-for-one Tuesday special over at the uh, colonic clinic he was saying now the natural question at any point is how much does this thing run? That's why I like to leave you links in the video description or scan that QR code there with your smartphone off the TV if that's how you're watching. I don't know why I decided to say TV like cement pond like I'm uh, anyway, you get the idea. The Clampets are over here, apparently. I'm very old for my age that I know the Beverly Hillbillies and all that kind of Texas tea sort of thing. Anyway, although, you know, I, I'm about to turn 41 at the time this is recording, but my hairline's about 56, so there's that. Um, other builders make this layout. Alpha Wolf does a version. Heritage Glen and Hemisphere do a version. There's Stick and Tin Wildwood, Salem versions. I'm, I'll, I'll dig up some links to some other people that have done something like this. Let you check those out and leave me a note on this video or one of those, which one you go with and kind of what makes the uh, the make or break difference and what do you think about the RV overall and until next time take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone Bye.